going on everyone? Meteorologist Hunter Ward. We've got a pretty dynamic system that's going to be moving into the area tomorrow, which will be December 17th. And then we'll have a prolonged event uh, into that Monday. And uh, it's going to be an interesting system. Some of the models were showing something a little bit ambitious of the low pressure moving over western North Carolina and, and having a period of of moderate to heavy snow into uh, Sunday evening and that has dissipated from the models they've moved that low pressure you know three to four hundred miles to the east and you know so that has kind of changed the track of this model still deepening uh, still getting really strong still gonna have the winds and and somewhat of the rain but not as much rain as as what was initially being shown if you saw my article that I put out. So just wanted to address that, that we may not see that period of snow tomorrow, but the chances really increase into Monday and Monday evening as an upper level low moves through as that low pressure is deepening up in the northeast. We're going to have some really strong gradients that happen, some streamers that really push out of those mountains. I think most everybody could get in on at least flurries, uh, accumulating snow, I think, north of I-40, kind of from a dusting to uh, you know much higher in the higher elevation. Let's go ahead and turn around to my screen. I want to thank All In Dumpsters. Uh, that's who I rely on for all the dumpster needs in the area. They can bring them uh, 10, 13, and 15 yarders. Give Patrick a call. And adding CP Cruise and Company again, they typically sponsor us here in the winter months. I appreciate Adrian and the crew uh, coming in and stepping up, sponsoring the website, and uh, helping to keep everything going Uh you know, <clears throat> this website isn't free, and uh, so we use some of these things, some of these sponsorships to keep things going. Better Homes and Garden, Maggie Valley camera live right now. Just a overcast view. You can see right there on uh, Soco Road going up there towards Catalucci into Maggie Valley. Grimes Tice Anderson, downtown Asheville camera as well here on uh, the screen, and then we've got the uh, Better Homes and Gardens downtown Canton camera on their office in Canton. Banner Elk live camera as well. Right up here in uh, BannerElk.com. Looking, that's Banner Elk right there. So you get a nice view looking down. All of these cameras uh, you can find uh, right here on the right hand side. There's several different ways to get to them. Checking out the Cabbage Rose camera. Another camera we have out in Maggie Valley. We've got the Lynn Freeman Bush camera, realtor from Blue Ridge Real Estate. Uh, the downtown Hendersonville camera as well on the Hands-On Museum. Down there, we've got the Ward's Plumbing, Heating, and Air camera as well. As we continue to get overcast, moisture is going to continue to push in as these fronts work against each other. And, uh, you know, that overcast will eventually turn to some rain Later this evening, I'll show you the models here in just a second. The Marthaler Jeweler live camera out in Fletcher. Uh, we've got, <clears throat> you know, thir 12 to 13 of them operating. Um, I've been working hard today to get these cameras fixed for you folks. Uh, Going to have all but most all of them fixed before any snow moves in. Uh, we've had the Bryson City camera. We've been, and we had to discontinue that one due to some internet issues and uh, some leasing issues and so we're going to relocate that camera to a new higher elevation location so stay tuned for that but let's move into the models i know that's why you're here let's see what is the rain what are we going to get as far as rain looking like a half inch the model showed three to four inches just two days ago and so they've dissipated it's not going to happen Slow pressure is not going to take the track that the models were showing. Thus, when it moves east 200 miles, 300 miles, that rain moves east 200, 300 miles. So heavy swath of rain is now over Charlotte, over Raleigh-Durham. Those areas are going to get popped by this rainfall. Look at this Lumberton, Fayetteville. All of those areas, three, four inches of rainfall. Asheville, slightly, you know, partly cloudy around the area into uh into sunday but that's when all things change look at this look at this northwest flow kicking up 
right here on the border. We've got high elevation locations Monday morning into uh, early Monday afternoon that we'll see these northwest flow snow showers kick up. But watch as I continue to run this model out. This is an M3KM that we're watching here. These streamers really develop as the sun begins to set. There's a possibility for some accumulating snow throughout the area. And, uh, you know, when we see these streamers pushing out of Asheville, that means we've got a really strong swath of moisture. There's going to be a little bit of downsloping. I don't think it'll be near as dramatic as this. And I think the models just struggle with the elevation, with the mountains here about, you know, what exactly is going to happen. This is some of the strongest streamers that I've seen coming out. They're definitely going to break containment. I mean, this is going to be heavy snow into Monday night. Conditions along the border will be treacherous as far as travel. I urge and caution you to uh, sit still as uh, the evening progresses on Monday if you've got plans to move north of the border of North Carolina, Tennessee state line there. And so run this out. Models aren't showing <clears throat> significant accumulation around Asheville. It's not typically how it happens with these northwest flow events, but an inch, an inch and a half could be possible. Not high-end snowfall totals, but this is a better event than I think that we saw all last year as far as northwest flow. And so the chances are there for snow to rack up for those locations, especially north of I-40, north of Asheville, Weaverville, locations like Mars Hill, Burnsville, Swiss, Little Switzerland. You guys are going to get in on the snowfall, whereas in some of these northwest flow situations, you guys miss out, but it's not going to be the case here, and uh, I think we'll cash in with an inch or so. I'll try to do my best with a snowfall map here. These northwest flow events are really difficult to refine, though, so uh, we'll, we'll do our best and, and get you something to look at, but uh, just... Bear with me, but watch the the main thing that I that catches my eye. Check this. Check out how strong this flow is, and it comes all the way from back here. You're gonna have these fingers of moisture that develop all the way from the Great Lakes, and so we'll pull this back on. Uh, pull it, go to pivotal here, and you can see these regional shots of these streams of moisture. Check it out. So as as you progress through the evening, you can see. They enhance all the way across. That's wind blowing across the Great Lakes. Waves splashing, getting up moisture into the atmosphere. That moisture rises. It makes it into snow. It gets up into the atmosphere and it just goes with the jet stream. And so it pushes all the way down into western North Carolina. Look at these streamers develop. Even into central North Carolina. So this indicates to me, we'll watch this. Got to keep an eye on it, but a high, high-end northwest flow event, a deepening low pressure, pressure gradient there, strong winds, and the 700 millibar level, the 500 millibar level, the surface level, 800 millibar or 850 millibar level, all of those levels will stack up in a line to push that snow out of the mountains of western North Carolina. So we'll continue to watch this, but you know sometimes these streamers, they'll reach all the way to Hendersonville, Brevard, um, you know, everybody can, can get in on these type Northwest flow events. So check back with me. Just wanted to do a quick update for you guys. I'll have something else for you tomorrow, another article about it, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you for joining me.